Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Raylib. Now Raylib is actually one of my favorite frameworks out there. It is CC++ based, but frankly it has bindings for every language ever. But the reason why we're talking about today is Raylib 5.5 was just released. By the way, this video has been brought to you by TechSmith's Camtasia and has been created using TechSmith's Camtasia. Stay tuned later in the video and I will show you exactly how that happened and why I use it. All right, back to Raylib. You want to learn about Raylib, it is available at raylib.com. The big thing about Raylib is it is super easy to use. So if you ever want to learn C or C++ programming, it is a great starting point. It basically has a turnkey install. And as you can see, it's available for basically every platform you can imagine. Since it is a C-based language, there's also language bindings for just about every language you can imagine, as you can see from right down here. There are 60 plus language bindings out there right now. Uh, and then on top of that, it's very modular in its basis. So you can selectively choose some of the code libraries from it. So for example, if you need a math library for your own game, you can just go ahead and use Ray Math. The same thing here for audio, GUI, and so on. Uh, it is a very cool project. And the cool thing about Raylib is really all you need to know to use it is this. This is a cheat sheet that kind of explains what every function does broken down by categories. These are all of the various different functions that are available. And it is, again, super, super, super simple to get up and going. And that's actually a key thing about this 5.5 release. So the 5.0 release was about a year ago, uh, 11 years since Raylib 1 was first released. Wow, I've been doing this for way too long. Uh, and this release has a ton of things in it. But one of the ongoing themes here is it's actually gotten even easier to use. And again, one of the big things I love about Raylib is how easy it is for beginners to get up and going. You can download it, you get a copy of Notepad++, you open up some code, you press, I think it's F5, and boom, boom, your code is up and running. But they've done a couple of things in this particular release that make that even better. So now we have a pre configured Windows package. So the new portable and self-contained Windows package for Raylib 5.5 intended for noble developers, I don't understand that, that start in programming world uh, comes with one big addition, support for C code building for the web platform with one single mouse click. So now if you want to build your uh, C code for the web, um, you can now do that. Uh, again, it made it a one click process. Uh, so um, pre-configured Windows package allows you to edit C projects on Notepad++ uh, and easily compile uh, Windows X executable with an automated script. Uh, this new release adds the possibility to compile the same C project for web platforms with a single mouse click. New addition greatly simplifies C to web assembly project building for new users. Uh, so the Raylib Windows installer package is available over on itch.io. So right here as a download, it is big, but it includes your entire tooler chain. So you do not need to have um, uh, Visual Studio installed or GCC or Clang or anything else. You don't need to worry about the tool chain. And that is actually one of the big tripping points when people are starting out using C or C++ for game development. And it basically has everything you need to start making your games. Now, another big part of Raylib, I actually covered this. This is sort of independent of 5.5 release, uh, but they also have the new project creator tool. Now, this is also very useful. So if you want to move beyond using the Notepad++ setup, say you want to use Raylib with um, Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, uh, how do you go about doing that? Well, there is now this project creator tool that allows you to do that. So the Raylib project creator generates a complete project structure with multiple build systems ready to use GitHub, CI, CD, actions pre-configured. It only requires providing the C file files and basic project parameters. The cool thing is you can actually check it out online. So here it is. This is the configurator. By the way, you can download this as well, obviously, and it makes it super simple. So basically you come on in here, uh, you specify the source files here. So you pick a couple of C files or drop them in right there. Uh, you pick where Raylib is installed to, and then you pick which platform you're going to be working with. So if you want to work with make files, which you could use if you're using something like C Lion or uh, Visual Studio Code or a Visual Studio 2022 uh, full version, you pick which one and it will generate the files for you. You also got um, a basic setup here. Uh, so a sample version of it. So this is just passing in a C project for you. And I go ahead, I want to create for here. You pick an output path and then you create it. So this makes it so that if you want to use Raylib and you don't necessarily want to use it uh, with Notepad++ and the tool chain they provide, you now have this easy project configurator for doing this for you. There's other ways of actually setting up Raylib. It's not actually that hard, but there is a building process or a learning process involved in that. And this new Raylib project creator tool actually takes that step out. Uh, they also have a new platform back end. So with uh, Raylib 5, they refactored the way back ends work. And this has enabled them to do a bunch of new things. Now they have RGFW, which is their own uh, back end here for doing things. This is replacing the um, 
S, uh, GLDL, GLFW or SDL backends. Uh, and this also is what made the web platform possible. Uh, so definitely a nice improvement there. It is also a single header only portable library, which makes it super easy again to use it in your own code. That is one of those things about Raylib that really shines is you can use it just the pieces that you want. It's very modular in nature and you don't have a thousand dependencies on other projects, which makes building it less difficult. Uh, also speaking of backends, there is also now support for SDL3. Now SDL3 is something I'm going to be covering at some point in the near future. Uh, it is the newest, latest and greatest version of SDL. Uh, it's not actually uh, fully released yet, I don't believe. I'm gonna have to look into that because I will do a video about SDL3. But um, so that is like the the graphics layer, the rendering layer, input layer, etc. That's what SDL provides. Uh, and this enables you to use it as a backend rendering there, the newest version, which is SDL3. And then interestingly enough, we're also taking a trip back in time. So with the split that Raylib 5.5 did, they have new backends easier. And then Raylib RLGL module now supports OpenGL 1.1, which is an absolutely prehistoric version of OpenGL. And this has had some upside in that it's enabled a lot of um, homebrew retro console backend implementations, including Dreamcast, PSP, and PS Vita. Uh, we also have uh, GPU skinning support. Uh, it's finally been added to Raylib thanks to contributor Daniel Holden, probably the developer that has further pushed model animations with Raylib, uh, developing two amazing tools to visualize and test animations, GenoView and BVHView. Added GPU skinning was a tricky feature considering it had to be available for all Raylib supported platforms, including limited ones like such as Raspberry Pi or OpenGL ES 2.0. Uh, where some of the OpenGL features are missing. A uh, multi-platform solution was found to make it possible. There is a new example of it available, uh, and you can check out the code for that here. All of the examples are, again, there's a ton of examples out there, and you can actually run. All of their examples are available on the main website as well. So we'll go back here, examples, you're gonna find a ton of them there, and I'm assuming there's, this new skinning one is available as well. Uh, so that is a new addition there as well. Uh, and then on top of that, Raymath now has C++ operators. Obviously, they only work in C++. Op um, C++ has a feature called operator overloading. If you're not familiar with C++, it allows you to do things like redefine how plus or uh, dot or how various different other operators actually uh, work not dot but say minus plus and so on plus plus uh and uh now they've got operators implemented for vector two vector three vector four quant quantarian uh matrix uh all have them obviously it is c plus plus only uh and then uh, also has another several other improvements, clipboard images, reading support, normal support on batching systems, CRC32, MD5, and SHA1 hash computation, gamepad vibration support, improved font loading, uh, time-based camera movement, and improved GLTF animation loading. So that is a very thorough and cool release. And again, one of the things I really like about it is a lot of it just makes a very accessible and easy to use C, C++ game engine even more accessible. So this video was brought to you by Camtasia and created using Camtasia. And as you can see, it starts off with a simple recording process. It comes with an integrated recorder, makes it super easy. If you're on camera, you can set it up to record your camera or not, record system audio or not. And you can turn on something called Rev, which uses kind of AI to automatically add video effects for you. I don't use it myself because I don't appear on camera. And then it's down to the editing process. And honestly, of all of the tools I have ever found out there, there is not a video editor that comes even close to being as easy to use while still being powerful powerful as what I find Camtasia. So this is a program I've used to make all the videos on this channel. I don't see that changing anytime in the future. If you want to go ahead and check it out, use code GAMEFROMSCRATCH at checkout and you will save 15% off. Thanks TechSmith for sponsoring. And ladies and gentlemen, let me know what do you think? Raylib 55. Have you used Raylib before? Are you going to check it out in the future? Can you think of an easier to use C or C++ framework out there? I personally can't. So let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.